Hi there. I'm going to show you our Veluga server print plugin for Edempierre. We created this plugin when the Swing client wasn't supported any longer and uh, it was necessary for us to print, for example, invoices one times on the letterhead and one times on blank paper so uh, it was much to click around until the printout was finished. You can find the whole documentation on the Edempierre page here in this plugin information but I'll show you just how to do it, how to install it. Yes. Not the installation itself, it's simply uh, installing it with Felix. Uh, you don't have to learn that normally. After installing the plugin, you will see uh, an additional button here. And if you click it without having configured the plugin, you will get the message nothing to print or transfer. I've prepared a sales order just to show how to configure it. First thing you will do is to install a printer because you normally want to have a printer when you go, are going to print. You will find the entries here under Beluga Server Print. Here is the printer entry and we have already provided an entry. The first three fields are for your information. The fourth is the name of the printer as it known by CUPS. If you are not using CUPS to print, then leave this, print, this entry empty and enter the address of the printer here. If you are using CUPS, enter the address of CUPS here and the name of the printer as it is known by CUPS here. Because you normally won't print on the printer with its standard attributes, you have to configure printer attributes here. You can enter an attribute name and its attribute values, but we have provided a method to read this printer attributes from CUPS or from, from the printer directly if it provides them. So I simply hit look up printer attributes and the attributes will be read by the printer. For example, the attribute media source, which defines from which tray the sheets are fetched. Normally, these names are not self-explaining, so you probably have to find out which name defines what. If you then have tested it, you can rename it, for example, tray1 in our example, or tray2. or uni, universal feeder. These names will be kept even if you run again the lookup printer at attributes. There may be attributes which are not defined with their values, for example, sites in this, with this printer, then you probably can view the possible values if you look 
at cups define the value as default and then you see here sides equal one-sided means not to do duplex printing. You can then enter the values by yourself. Of course, you don't want to enter these attributes anytime you are printing or you, you define a new printout. So we prepare a configuration, for example, printing on letterhead. And for this example, we want to define the media source as tray 2 and sides as one sided. <coughs> The second configuration for blank paper will need only the division, definition of media source because the printer by default prints duplex. I have uh, prepared a second printer just to show uh, in the other windows how to use the different printers. Second, what you do is to implement formats for later letter use in the print profiles. This is done with a print configuration. There you again can, for example, create an entry for the letterhead. And an entry for blank paper. And then you define where to print this standard blank, blank paper. If you want to have it for all users, keep this field empty. Take this printer and the configuration blank paper. And this is a standard print config. If, yet, if, if, for example, the super user wants to print blank paper on another printer, you can enter an additional entry. with this configuration. For printing on the letterhead, all people, even the super user, will use the Kyocera as a task alpha.
Okay. Next step is to find so-called copy types. When printing, you will always uh, deliver printouts for certain reasons. For example, you will have a printout for your archive. You will have a printout for your business partner. And perhaps you will have a printout for your lawyer. Or for your tax consultant or what else. Anytime a printout then is generated, we will try to find a definition for any of these copy types. If we don't find a definition for this document and this copy type, we simply don't do a printout for this copy type. Now we are ready to define our first profile. We call it default profile with, with printout. It takes a priority zero. I'll explain this later. This profile will be the default profile and to get it a little bit ordered we don't configure the copies directly but sort it by the document type or the tab. We only prepare now for a sales order Here for a standard order. You can define also a tab where this, where this print profile works or you can define both. So the print profile will only work on standard order in a given tab. Next is to define which copies we want to do. First we define a name, our order print out. We select the process which will provide this printout. You can define the extension which will be pr pr provided to Jasper reports. But if you don't do portable document format is a standard. But if you, for example, need semicolon separated values for uh, an automated ordering system, you can enter it here. Additionally, you can provide a report variant. We take here copy, which will then create a gray big copy on the paper. But this value is simply 
pass to the Jasper report so you can do can enter anything you want and the Jasper report has to know what to do it is with it. The copy type here is our archive. Next time next uh, is how to uh, to define what to do with this here generated printout. First we can enter it in in the archive of Eden Pierre here so you will find it later on. If you want to print you will have to say with which printer config print config we defined before it has to be printed in this case we take the blank paper with one copy and we can also enter a, an email we want to send it without interaction We want to use garden admin as from. We want to send it to a fixed email address. For example, my own address. A second copy, of course, should go to the business partner. It takes the same process, but without the report variant copy. And of course, the copy type business partner. This won't go to the archive. And because we are up to date, we want to send it as email and not print it out, out. And we want to use the user as from who is preparing the mails. If there are any attachments at the order we want to add them these attachments here at us are prepared with the name order underline if you want to put it for example in a document management system or want to back it up for any reason on your server you can also enter a path here where the document will be put down okay we rename it here because we decided to do it with email Now we are prepared to really print out or send this order. So now pressing this should open the email window because we here in the second didn't check the send directly as you see we have the same address here for from and to 
because I don't want to send to an order to a business partner really. In normal cases, you will see here the address of your business partner. This attachment is a document just generated by your print profile and this document was attached to this order document as attachment. As you see, you can use your normal email templates and of course you can alter here before sending or add additional attachments. If I try to send I'll get an error message because our test server, of course, is not allowed to send emails out. So I simply stop it here. That's about sending emails, uh, sending sales orders. Why now do we have priorities and several print profiles here? For example, you have a business partner who wants to get a printed document anytime. Then you simply create a new print profile You leave the priority because we don't have to supersede something, but you don't set it as standard. We take again our standard order. And now set printing to letterhead because of course we want to get it printed on a letterhead. <laughs> to get this connected with your business partner we go to our business partner um, for example our Joe Block for which for whom this standard order was and add this print profile to his to his business partner profile. So anytime we want to print for Joe Block, we will find the printing for business partner profile, which supersedes only the entry the entry for business partner in our standard profile. All other entries are left as before. Same could possibly be necessary for our boss. We had entered um, 
an email to him for each standard order, but perhaps if he itself prints out a standard order, he doesn't want to get an email additionally. So for the copy type, our archive, we take the same configuration as before in the default. But we leave out any email sending. Then we have to add this to our boss. We take, for example, this boss and add it here. Now a word on priorities. When we are looking for a copy entry, we first look for all print pro profiles matching. Matching means they belong to our organization or to all organizations. They are defined as standard or they are connected with the user or the business partner. They are then ordered by priority, highest priority first, then all non-standard entries because they are stem from the user or the business partner and then the standard entries within the, entry, um, the, the entries then, they are sorted by organization first and then the entry for all organizations. So um, a profile with defined as standard with organization star is the least valuable. The next step is to sort by the subprint profile. There, entries with both set, document type and tab are used first, then those with the document type set and least those with the tab set. Of course, at least only profiles where the actually researched copy type matches are included. So much on priorities. So I hope I could make, give you an idea what is possible with our Beluga server print. If there are any questions, you saw my email address on this video, simply ask me via email or via the Google group for Edempierre. Thank you.